Hey everybody, what is going on? Today I am in the bathroom and we are doing a live because we've made a little bit of progress on what's going on. This is, of course, Eric's Creative. It's kind of linked to Argonomics podcast. If you haven't checked out my wife and I's podcast about, well, the house remodel, but just about life and things, um, we're extremely analytical and um, that's good and bad in some cases, but we just figure out that you can get through the orgs of life laughing and it not be so bad. So we are talking about some of the challenges and some of the wins that we have with the bathroom. But today in this video, I am talking about the product that we used, why we chose to go with spray in foam, as you can see versus fiberglass roll-in foam um, or, you know, matte foam, or I'm sorry, not foam, matte insulation that is more traditional and um, some of the pros and cons of it. So I'm gonna talk about what we've used and, and that stuff, so here we go. So as you can see, the bathroom is pretty well done. There are a few situations um, where it's not where I want it to be, like this one here not quite the thickness I want it to be. So I'll build that up a little bit, this one as well. These two here, well actually these three right here, had like the can foam spray in, and that stuff did not work. I mean, it technically did, but it doesn't stick, it doesn't have enough pressure, and it builds up too thick, and it falls off the wall, and it rolls onto the floor, and then you have to clean up a lot, and you waste a lot. So um, when we started looking at that, that's when we came up with these, or we investigated these. My wife went to Home Depot and found one. Home Depot sells the one that's a DAP touch and foam. It's good as well. I do prefer this Froth Pack 200 um, as far as the ease of application. It's not that it's terribly different, but it's just enough different that it, I just prefer it a little bit better. Um, I prefer the re the response of the gun and everything, but if you can't get the froth pack very easily and all you can get is the DAP touching um, foam, you should be fine as well. So um, you do only want to put on a layer of about an inch thick at a time and let it sit at least 10 minutes, but maybe longer if it's cooler, and then go back and put your second, third, or whatever layers on them. This is about two layers on this. Um, they say it foams up to about, they don't really give an expanse rate to be honest with you. Um, I would say it foams up to about two inches per, uh, you know, thickness, depending on how much you apply and everything like that. Um, so it, if you are trying to use the spray cans of foam, it kind of, builds up in big clumps kind of like this did and it rolls out um whereas if you have the nozzle on right so the nozzle fell off and that's what happened to all this and i didn't realize what was going on until after i had tried to do pretty much this whole wall but if you do it right with the nozzle on it um they have two nozzles one that's more like a cylinder and so it shoots further distance but it's less fan pattern and then one's a fan pattern um it should lay in there pretty much like this it's never going to be smooth, but it should stick real well to the wall because it comes out in a, a wider spray pattern and it's less weight per and it should stick to it. So, um, yeah, this is this turned out really well. I'm really stoked on what we've got going on here now. It's not cheap. I will tell you that um, it's way more expensive than you would be paying for fiberglass insulation, but in certain cases, you may want the foam insulation. Why might you want the foam insulation? Well, for us, okay, um, we wanted foam insulation because this is a 116 year old house. It's not very well constructed with insulation and things. So it tends to create more sound issues. First off, um, directly room to room. Second off, right below this bathroom, I will have a recording studio and that will be for my podcast and video um, voiceovers and whatever um, that I do for that. And then third, um, 
This house, because it is so old, does not have OSB sheeting out there. Hold on, let me turn this back around. It doesn't have OSB cladding or sheeting on the outside. It only has um, one by 12s. And most of those have weathered over the years and there's big gaps. In fact, some of the gaps, like right here, you can see that little indention. That's where a gap between the one by 12s was and it was like an inch and a half thick wide right there. So even though the sidings on it, literally you have um, like Tyvek paper that somebody put on there because they put new siding on it, siding, and that's all you have to cover that gap. So while I could have put the fiberglass insulation in it and it would have done fair, that fiberglass insulation would have been really exposed to, um, you know, the outside air and moisture and that tends to allow more mold and things potentially to to get in the fiberglass mat are is definite our insulation is definitely more porous and it will allow some of that stuff to kind of creep in a little bit further where this is kind of just seals it all off and we just felt more comfortable having it all sealed off this right here for us is actually the exposed brick that's the outside. I don't know if you guys can, yeah, you can see the brick right there. So you could actually see it in here. It just, they cut the wall out and put the brick in. Um, so there were gaps, insects could get in and things, rats, you know, mice, whatever. So we chose not to um, go with the mat insulation, which could be easier for those rodents to get through as well and insects to get through and we went with the foam it nothing's going to keep rats and mice out 100 percent if they want to get in so keep that in mind but it just helps seals it and makes it a little bit more of a challenge in that case um and here i've got to put a few more runs on this one you'll notice that this here is not covered at all i mean it is covered up and it's not insulated at all the reason for that is first off we have a leak because of the way they did this. This is an old cast iron pipe. It runs up into the roof, but they have a piece of PVC, two and a half inch PVC um, running up through it, sleeved up through it for the vent in the bathroom for the commode and the sink drains. And um, it's just a bad deal. So we need to chisel this out and then we're gonna pull that out through the ceiling, the roof replace that, get it all fixed up, and then we can insulate all of this in in here. Um, so I have one more system. Once again, this is the Froth uh, Sealant 200 system. They say it covers, um, I don't remember how many cubic feet. They, they call it board feet because it's one inch thick by whatever, but um, 200 board feet. That's what they say it. Where's it at? There you go. 200 board feet is what they say this covers. I would say that's pretty much accurate. So that's one inch thick by 12 by 12. And I've used two of these systems. Well, really one and a half. That one's still got some in it. And I've got a whole nother system out there. Now these systems, once again, not cheap. I don't even remember six or $700 per system. So not, not very cheap. That's why we're not using it in the whole house. However, it in certain areas where you want it really sealed, this is a good idea. There is a quite a bit of cleanup you have to do. So you're gonna have to scrape all this off so that the sheetrock and the heart, in this particular case, the hardy board, the uh, hardy backer for the tiling will lay flat. It also covers your um, pipes, which is good and bad. It's good in the sense that your pipes are insulated and encapsulated as well. It's bad in the fact that it can make repairs a bit of a challenge in the future, but you can cut them out if you want like that. You just need to make sure you tape it all up and make sure that nothing is preventing you from, you don't seal them off so you can't get to them with um, tools to uh, put on your spigot and your, your, you know, your um, shower, connections and shower head and all that we are doing these are there's pipes here that green run to the valve 
And then this here is a piece of tubing that has an elbow. This is gonna be an external tube of copper that goes up, comes externally mounted on the ceiling and then the shower head is there. So um, this is okay. We just needed to tape it off and see, I can get to all this. You just gotta cut and pry at it a little bit, but it's no major issue, right? You can always cut this stuff away and, and work at it. Now, here we have the um, electrical lines. So that is a bit of a different story, but as you can see, just peel it off and it comes right off if you need it to. So no big deal. Um, you know, you just have to work that it's, there's pros and cons um, to this. It's gonna be harder for them to pull wire if they need to in the future, but the insulation rating and space value is way better. The amount of R value insulation wise from what I've read per inch of thickness is better on this stuff than it is on the fiberglass mat. And here in Colorado where we get down to negative 18 degrees sometimes, negative 15 in the winter, that's important, especially in this old house. So um, that's fine. You, you know, you can use tape. It's gonna be kind of sealed on there. So you're gonna have to kind of tear or cut away. But then the tape, you know, once you get it enough away, you can um, just pull the tape off and have access to everything. So it's a bit more work, but I will say it's less cumbersome and less um, itchy and less desirable than the fiberglass insulation for sure, without a doubt. So once we get this done, he's also got to put a nailer in right here for the light fixture that goes over the vanity and we've got to put nailers in there for the, um, uh, not the vanity, the medicine cabinet. We've got a new medicine cabinet that'll be going in. So we've got to put nailers here to nail it on. Got to add a nailer up top because we are putting a new um, piece of sheetrock up in the ceiling instead of ripping out the old sheetrock, which would be the more traditional way of doing it. We've got spray in foam, uh, not spray in foam. It's that um, chipped insulation, like the, looks like, I don't know, um, cotton, but you know what I'm talking about. And we've got that blown in the ceilings. So we would have to scrape it all off and get it all out to replace this. And we figured in this room, since the sheetrock is so small, the roof is so small, or the ceiling so small, we're actually gonna just throw a new piece of sheetrock on it. But because of that half inch difference, it eliminates your nailer up here. So we had to put these in to have a good nailing surface or screw surface for the new hardy backer and sheetrock that's going in. We're using green sheetrock in the bathroom for all the walls. Um, they only had five sheets, we needed six. So we are using one standard sheetrock for the ceiling, but the other stuff is all mold resistant. The hardy backer has the hydro protection on it and the ceiling will be standard sheetrock, but all the walls over here will be green sheetrock, which is mold resistant. We do of course have our flooring in. We've got it protected by the plastic here and we got the new shower base in. Um, they said granite. It looks like it's actually a cement composite and they have a granite-ish styled screen print on it. Does that make it less appealing? Well, it's kind of frustrating because they didn't really clarify that, but it still looks really nice. It's really high quality. And um, I think it was still worth the money. It's just a little bit frustrating that it wasn't what we thought it was exactly. But that's okay. We're not gonna send it back. It's already glued into place. We've got it down where it needs to be. And now um, once we get these few things and I can get all that sprayed off and we can finish up, then I can uh, start putting Hardy Backer on the walls and we can start getting ready for tiling, which should be here very soon. So hope that's beneficial for you. So real quick recap, um, we I like the froth pack better than the DAP touch and foam, even though the DAP touch and foam is okay. Um, I would not use it if I have a preference or a choice. I'm going to use the froth pack over that. Uh, pros, seals really well, gives you a high R value for a smaller amount of space because it's denser. Um, helps 
seal for liquids, airs, and insects to some level. Also, um, it is very quick to install. Okay, cons. It's pretty expensive. Um, for this bathroom, it's going to cost right around uh, $2,000 in insulation. So not cheap, but will help with everything going on in this house because of the way it is. Also, um, you have to tape up the ceiling, the floors, and any sections of the walls and the windows that you don't want um, to have it on. Because even though I was trying to be careful, you're going to get it on the ceilings a little bit and things, and definitely on the floor. It has a lot of overspray. Not as bad as like spray paint because it's a, it's a larger cellular system, but it does have overspray. Also con is that you're going to have to go back and cut this all down to the size to fit in between your studs. So I would recommend this in spaces like your garage or that kind of stuff um, where you don't have to worry about cleanup as much, especially if it's going to be open walls and not closed walls. I would also recommend it if you have big gaps, you need to seal pretty easily. It does that pretty well. Um, or where you need a lot of sound deadening with a relatively small amount of space to put insulation in. Um, these are all two by four walls, not two by sixes because this is an old house. Colorado now requires two by six for the R12 and we couldn't fit that in here, but this will do a lot better job. So definite pros and cons to it. Watch some videos on YouTube. They will talk about more of the pros and cons, but don't just watch the con videos because they'll like convince you out of it. Whereas the pro videos, um, they'll try to talk you into it and you should see both sides of it because it's not a perfect product by any means. And that's just how it is. So, um, as long as you know that and realize it's expensive, it takes a lot of work, but it has its specific places of merit, then I think you'll be okay with this, um, foam. So yeah, it's, um, we've got just a little bit more going on there, there. And then we've got to do all that once we get all the measurements right and get the boards in for the light fixture um, connection junction box and the nailers to hang the, what's that called? The medicine cabinet from. So now I've got to go to Home Depot, pick up sheetrock and sheetrock mud, sheetrock tape so that we can get ready to do the ceiling. And then um, hopefully today, We'll start hanging hardy backer and start tiling if everything goes as we we plan but we're gonna have to go back and respray a little bit before we do that because i've got to get some of these a little bit thicker in their areas so thank you guys for watching the video and i will talk to you guys in the future bye